In this video, we discuss the level meter section of the Hawkeye audio analyzer. Let us first undock the level meter and scale it up a bit. Okay, like this. Then we minimize the main window. Okay, the level meter has eight vertical bars grouped in pairs. Each pair consists of a slender bar, which shows the true peak level, and the wider bar, which shows the RMS level. RMS is the abbreviation for root mean square, which probably doesn't make it any clearer either. Well, basically we're looking at an average level. There is a pair of true peak and RMS meters for the left channel and for the right channel, as well as for the mid and the side. The mid is the in-phase mono part of the stereo signal. Let's open the vector scope. You see the 45 degrees tilted cross and when you engage the label mode it says mid in face in the upper and in the lower triangle. What you see here is displayed as levels in the mid bars of the level meter. And the side is then the outer face part of the stereo signal. Looking at the vector scope again this part is displayed in the left and right triangle. When you hover over the meter bars, a horizontal line appears with a value box that gives you a precise readout. There are more value boxes above each pair of bars. The upper ones show the maximum true peak hold levels, which is the numeric equivalent to the upmost horizontal line of the slender true peak meter bar. The lower value boxes show the falling true peak, which is the numeric equivalent to the lower falling horizontal line of the slender true peak meter bar. As you can see in this example, the upper value box and its value turn red and the label ISP appears. ISP stands for intersample peak. ISPs emerge when a recorded signal is not limited by an oversampled limiter hitting the 0 dB threshold. This is a common practice in mastering to achieve more loudness, but as the days of the loudness war are fading, luckily, we should take more care about ISPs and that they do not occur. The problem with ISPs is that when such a signal is converted back to analog, it can cause overs of up to 3 dB resulting in distortion in the analog part of the DAC, which is the digital audio converter. Moreover, some online streaming services analyze audio content for ISPs and reduce their playback level by the amount of overshoot. Above the value boxes, uh, there is a drop-down menu that allows you to select four different scales for the metering bars. Full scale is abbreviated with FS. The level bars have a range from minus 42 dB to plus 3 dB, including 3 dB for intersample peaks. The other three scales are so-called K scales, named after and developed by Bob Katz. Bob Katz proposed an integrated system of metering and monitoring that encourages more consistent leveling practices in film, broadcast and music production. The scales are K12, ranging from minus 30 to plus 15 dB, including 3 dB for ISPs, K14, ranging from minus 28 to plus 17 dB, also including 3 dB for ISPs, and finally K20 ranging from minus 22 to plus 23 dB, including 3 dB for ISPs as well. Next to the scale selection, there is a button labeled RMS plus 3 dB. Activating this function adds 3 dB to the display of the broader RMS meter bar, and this makes the RMS metering EBU compliant. The reason is that when reading, for example, minus 20 dB RMS, it should also be minus 20 in loudness units full scale, when fed a minus 20 dB FS stereo 1K sine tone. I can show you this by feeding a sine tone, and when opening the loudness meter as well, you can see that these values are identical.
and uh, normally the RMS value of a sine tone is um, 3 dB lower than the peak value. Um, but to comply with the EBU, we added this function. And uh, not just for that, but also for a pretty practical reason. Um, when calibrating an audio system by using a sine tone, it is most handy when the peak value is identical to the RMS to calibrate VU meters. Okay, the last feature to discuss is the histogram. It displays the true peak distribution of the left channel by the yellow line and the right channel by the red line. It allows to check whether the usage of compression or limiting stays within acceptable limits. A Gaussian distribution like this indicates a clean signal. Uh, let me start a different track and you see a horizontal peak spike before 0 dBFS. Um, uh, I intentionally uh, um, faded the audio because I don't want to uh, uh, yeah, make this public. Um, the width of this line reveals the extent of compression limiting um, applied to the audio signal, which is pretty hefty in this case. Okay, that's it for the level meter and um, it continues with the loudness meter in the next uh, video. See you then, um, have fun and uh, bye bye.